Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Essie and today we're going to be reviewing the latest Nigerian web series on Netflix, Far From Home. So let's get into this video. Episode 1 basically starts off with us getting introduced to Ishaya and we find out that he's been nominated to go and meet his mentor Essien in London and he needs money to Jackpa. He needs a lot of money to Jackpa. So his friend Michael decides to help him out, you know, to sell art and a lot of things. And it seemed like everything was going to work. They then introduce us to his sister, Ralia, who is very, very much interested in going to Wilma Academy. Matter of fact, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, okay, so it's going to be about the girl getting into Wilma Academy and I'm like, I don't know how Isha is actually going to get into Wilma Academy because I'd already seen the trailer, of course, so I knew he did get in. But I was like, okay, interesting. So maybe two storylines. And of course, we see them celebrating Ralia. We find out about his family background. He's from a poor home and his dad is crippled. His dad is sort of not taking the center stage anymore because he feels guilty for his um, son's death whilst chasing his own dreams and the mom is basically anti-dream at this point like this is not anti-dream anti-dream like that woman does not want to hear anything about dreaming and that comes through when the ad for Wilma Academy comes on and she then switches off the TV when Ralia was getting excited about it. I, when I was watching that, just felt like, okay, it is a scholarship. What is your problem? The girl wants to go to the school. The school is talking. They're making an advert about how she could possibly get in without you paying a dime and you're switching off the TV. I'm just like, sometimes I feel like some parents don't just get it. Anyway, to not digress too much. So our superhero boy Ishaya saves up some money puts it in a box and tragedy hits the family the father has to be rushed to the hospital and guess what happens the mother goes forth actually scratch that the sister tells the mom where Ishaya has stashed up his savings for his trip to London and they use it for the bills see yeah, when i watched that part that was when i started making notes i was just like okay 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 let's talk about this what do you think let me know in the comment section are you in support of what the mom did or are you against it i am sitting on the chair of against because i just felt like that was disrespectful that was wrong on every account she did not work for the money she cleans she makes her coins this boy is out there struggling running helter skelter drawing things and then she had the guts to tell him that he's wicked i know and that's wrong and what even pained me was when she was he was telling her that ah mom i've been excited for this london thing i want to use the money to travel and she said that he's devilish or demonic i was just like oh, sis stop it how dare you how dare you like if the boy travels to london now and he blows is it not you that will still gain like again if he's left is that not one less mouth for you to feed like I just didn't get it. I just felt like it just reminded me of when I was little, you know, when you know when your uncles and aunties come to visit you and then they give you money and your mom is like, oh let me hold it for you. And then they spend your money, yeah. And then you go back to your friends and you're like, oh mommy, please my money. And they're like, all the food you've been eating in this house since that was the that was what they just acted there. And it was back then it was funny, right? But in this case, it was not funny at all. I was very, very offended with the mom. I just thought, okay, you've messed up everything. So that has happened to Ishaya. And being a nice brother that he is, he's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to actually this happened before. He didn't like the way the mom basically squashed the um, Ralia's dream and it's like you know what let's go to the Wilma school together let's go and find out how you can get in on this scholarship and I felt like that was very nice he really was a caring brother and you know he follows out to the school they're very excited on the way to the school oh my god first of all when I saw him with the Isaleko shirt even before the sister said anything I was like 
guy is like you live in a jigule you're going to like the posh posh island you're like, like at least dress well like why do you have to wear a shirt like that and tata jeans and i'm just like bro bro see so many times ishaya was pissing me off with his dressing i was just like keep up can't you keep up okay and like and his sister told him this your shirt is jack you don't need to wear that i am proudly from the ghetto on your shirt be from the ghetto and be proud of it that's your business but like you don't have to let the whole world know because at the end of the day you're going to be judged based on how you look if you look like you're from the slums people are going to treat you from like you're from the slums that's just it so i was not surprised when they were trying to cross the road and then Femi Branch and his jeep just came and the way he insulted them guys i'm not even lying it pained me it felt like it was me they were insulting i was so pained i just felt out to be honest i've talked about how his shirt was a bad idea but like he they didn't deserve the insults that he got particularly because femi branch actually knows ishaya because ishaya walks like cleans their house i just felt like that insult was not warranted if you wanted to insult them insult them small not insult them ah yeah poor people it, i i can't actually remember the way he insulted them but it was bad it was really really bad and i was like i have to talk about it okay well i think the shocking part for me and we need to talk about it is why is the scholarship money 150k like it's supposed to be a scholarship it's supposed to be free but in the end you are charging them 150k for the scholarship i just felt like it was unfair like scholarships are for people that cannot afford to go to school okay typically you tell them to write an essay or do an exam like in this case the fact that they had to pay 150k to get in i just felt like it was nonsense i felt like it was the rich people just wanting someone of their caliber to be celebrated still because we see that happen um with Femi Branch and his son Derry Day um saying, Oh, I want you to get in as a scholarship student. You're rich, I can afford it, but I still want you to get in as a scholarship student. The only reason why that would even make sense is because you are considered the star student, you know, there's that spotlight on you. So when for example, now the father goes into this rich people conversation he can be like oh yeah my son is a scholarship student and you know there's just that pride that comes with it of course they're not doing it because they care about people that cannot afford the school matter of fact they don't want poor people in the school because that's what we come to understand as the series play out but i just thought it was something interesting to talk about another thing that they highlighted in this episode was the fact that ralia felt like oh she couldn't become the neurosurgeon that she wanted to be without going to a prestigious school and i think that's wrong and that's where parents and guidance counselors come in like you don't have to go to i think kids should know this you don't need to go to like the biggest school the best school in the world to be that person you want to be or to achieve your dreams like you can go to a public school and still be great matter of fact i feel like the only time going to a really prestigious school like wilma and all of that for example we'll say to a prestigious university because don't get me wrong there's a whole world of good that comes out when you go to a popular well-known school or a well-ranked school like it literally opens doors for you but at the end of the day for secondary school level let me put it like that okay for secondary school level i don't think it's such a big deal let me know what your thoughts are in the comments i felt like she could have still gone to that like a normal school maybe in the Saleco. as long as the curriculum is actually good and you get to learn what you need to learn i think then you can now push to go to like a really really good university rambo is crazy first of all where in the world did these people find hyena from <laughs> it was actually funny 
because that is definitely not CGI. I was like, where did this go and find hyena? Did they go to like just zoo and kidnap the only living hyena in the country? Because bro, oh my god, that part I it, I was watching it and I texted my sister and we're like where did these people go and find hyena from? Because I was like, okay, okay. I know you're doing this for effects, but I don't know how many drug lords in Nigeria actually own a hyena that will be like eating people up when they mess up, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, I felt like Ishaya was very, very stupid to actually steal from governments. Like, it was so obvious when I was watching it. I just said, this is just going to be the downfall of Ishaya. This small money that he thinks he has stolen is so like why he literally just put his entire family in danger. Like nah, nah. But I felt like that was very clever of the writers to connect the story in that way. See, when I started watching episode one, the moment they showed government and they were talking about Molly, I was like, okay, he's going to be selling drugs at this fancy school how they're going to get there i don't know but i thought maybe he would beg the man and be like oh please can i sell money for you but i like the fact that they made us they made ishaya owe him like there was a reason why he needed to sell he it's not like he just woke up one morning and decided you know what i'm desperate so i want to start selling drugs that's the path i thought they would have gone on so it was a very good deviation from the cliche way they would have gone i'm not saying that this way they've done it is also like so unexpected but it was a good um a good segue yes carmen gave us a little bit of backstory carmen is a troubled teenager she's traumatized from the accident again another thing to talk about here is if your kid has been through any traumatic incident whether big or small in your eyes if they say it is traumatic to them i think they really need to see a therapist there's nothing wrong in seeing a therapist in this age and time today where mental well-being is very very important i think it's so important that we pay attention not only to ourselves but to our loved ones our kids our friends and make sure that they're getting the help that they need okay and don't just push them because what we saw in this series was the parents just kept pushing her to be this poster child for the founding family of the school not necessarily caring for her, her mental health you know the mom was very well aware of the fact that she was using her painkillers wrongly and yes she did take it away but she also added pressure if that makes any sense i feel like the girl wasn't she wasn't herself okay she wasn't completely healed and you can't do you can't heal halfway and then just expect the results to be perfect like you need to go through all the steps not just the actual going to the hospital and getting the legs fixed but her mental health needed to be checked and i felt like i'm happy that they sort of touched on that a little bit in this um episode the way episode one ended basically we see that government now comes to Ishaya's house, is asking, oh, where's my money, blah, blah, blah. Of course, we knew that they were going to find out that was a no-brainer. I think for me, episode two, what then happens afterwards that offended me is the fact that his mom sent him away from home. I didn't particularly agree with that. I felt like, you see, someone is in trouble, okay? I don't imagine that at my lowest, my parents will now send me away from the house. I feel like you're already in trouble, you're not thinking straight. To me, at the end of the day, when I watch this series, I sort of blame his parents. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in comments. I feel like, first of all, if the mom hadn't stolen his money in the first place, maybe he wouldn't have stolen, okay? And if he hadn't stolen, and then got some caught and the parents sending him away maybe he would have made better decisions but he she, i just felt like that was the wrong time of course she was uh, she was upset they had put the whole family in trouble they are taking his sister you know to go and work at the rush nightclub which is a very very dangerous place they are going to of course steal her innocence from her so i i understood where the mom was coming from it's very 
her anger was valid but i just felt like she didn't need to send him away now speaking of people that work at rush adufe let's talk about adufe first of all this girl <laughs> her name is Dubemi Efe or something like that. She always acts this role where I never like her. She's always very annoying. Let me know what your thoughts are on Adufe. I feel like Adufe is a terrible girlfriend. First of all, she had no right to just... Of course, she has the right to break up with whoever she wants to break with, but I just felt like her reason for breaking up with Isha did not make sense. Yes, he omitted to tell you that he was planning to relocate to London but just guilt tripping him like oh after all this year i thought we we're going to end up together i thought we we're going to marry i'm like sis chill dude hasn't even found his footing here talking about wedding or marriage like relax he's still a struggling artist i mean you want to be eating your fingers when you get guys get married he's trying to see how he can be somebody and then marry you before you know like one step at a time for me it just didn't make sense to wish broke up with him I, man, I, when i was a child I was like good riddance to bad rubbish because i just cannot what what was that like mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. stay in your lane madam the fact that she broke up with him and then went to the club and it was like whining waste for you know rambo and then eventually started going out with rambo and then came back to Ishaya's face to tell him that oh what did you ever buy for me when we we're together i was just like girl bye bye because mm -mm, you're not a real one at all however like i said i was very happy that she was at rush to be able to you know protect ralia a little bit i found her relationship with ralia to be really really nice even though i definitely think adufe is very selfish she's always self-preserving first as with most humans and that's fair but i felt like with the relationship she had with ralia um as we see later on in episode four or five what she did as regards kidnapping of frank was not cool at all that in this episode there was one scene that definitely had me laughing and that was when zina was auditioning <laughs> When Zina was auditioning to be a cheerleader, oh my god, guys, that part was too funny. I rewinded it because I was like, what is she doing? What is this dance? What is this? She looked like a, a spider that was about to climb the cobweb or something. It was bad. It was bad. I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought about the dance. I just thought the band was very, the dance was very, very cringy. Um, yeah, other things that play out in this episode is we see how um, Ishaya is able to start selling Molly at his school. He needed to become friends with Reggie so that he was so that he'll be able to go for like the coolest or the biggest party. Um, and yeah, in order for him to do that, he had to join the football squad. And also at school, he's formed his own little clique with Frank and Zina. And I thought that was okay, nice. I like the way that storyline flowed. Of course, other things played out in this episode. We found out that Nena is a terrible, terrible friend to Carmen because whilst her friend had suffered a ghastly accident accident and you know fractured her leg and was dealing with all the scars and everything she was there sleeping with atlas i was like may god protect us from friends like nina it's really those ones that are always claiming more spiritual like i'm like they're the ones that are always the, the worst you know like for me oh i don't want you guys to be wearing um first of all that cheerleading dress with ankara is a no-no if i was a cheerleader i would quit the squad before i wear that dress so it was just a dress i was like you that you are talking nonsense for me spiritual you know you had the one sleeping with someone else's boyfriend and then when the person was hurt he didn't have the decency to even visit i just felt like that was bad the moment i saw her story atlas i was like nah i knew you were gonna be cancelled from day one the one but yeah um atlas of course is an idiot i'm not going to spend too much time talking about it now episode three is like the turning point so from episode one episode two you're like oh my god ishaya 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 you're rooting for ishaya right episode three now we now see ishaya of course he got high on his drugs and everything government they've now carried him to be fed to the hyena 
that part was so funny the fact that <laughs> because that was the cliffhanger for episode two yeah where they basically release angel to go and eat ishaya the fact that he climbed the windows oh my god that part had me rolling that part had me rolling fam like it was too funny i was like this shaya if you survive this i'm telling you i'm telling you better go and give thanksgiving in church so of course ishaya survives it and in this episode basically this episode is called the dr high effect ishaya gets the idea from reggie to now start selling molly in a very coded way on their social media platform blink and get his money codedly um for me i was I, by this point i was still rooting for ishaya but midway into this episode i wasn't because eventually the idea that reggie gives him works out he's able to sell the drugs and he's making money but he's now forgotten the fact that he's owing his friend michael and michael actually took community money join joy money add your money to give you to help you at your lowest the least he could have done really the least ishaya could have done is just pick up the damn call or send a text back he didn't send any text he was just excited at the opportunity to sell these drugs and the fact that it was easy for him i was very very disappointed and i literally wrote in my notes ishaya is very very selfish are you mad like the fact that michael was there getting beaten at work the fact he left work to go home i was like nah nah ishaya you're cancelled whatever pity i had for you before i don't want to have any more again because that is that was very 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 unfair it, it was so bad that the sister actually had to go to his school the moment the sister came right the sister came to his school sister has told you okay see you this is your friend he needs his money you please can you do the needful the fact that he delayed he prioritized going to hang out with carmen at the stable okay i get it carmen threatened to throw his book into the toilet of course he she was not going to do that like duh i felt like he just one bike ride home give this boy his money and then be gone go and do as you please i just uh, nah 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 for, that was from then on i was just like ishaya you're cancelled like i get it you've suffered a lot of things have happened but your decision making skills bro it, it needs to be checked is the foundation is very very selfish we have a lot of selfish leaves around you know we need to weed it because it's very very bad um so yeah that was like the highlights for me in episode three so episode four for me was by far the most hectic <laughs> the he most hectic and exciting at the same time to watch it was packed with a lot of buzz in my opinion a whole lot happened so we ended episode three with the school blowing up and all of that of course we knew stuff had to go down they're going to be stricter and that was just that also coincided with when um ishaya had gone to ask government stupidly for more drugs to sell at school now i felt like ishaya should have just taken a clean exit then but no he went to ask for more drugs and now there was going to be stop and search at school okay fair enough the students protested that went away and then they decided to put cameras which in my opinion was way worse than stop and search again two of them were was bad for business regardless but um i felt really sorry for isha at that point because he had just now been shortlisted for the scn arts stuff in, at that point in time i just really wished he had stopped selling drugs and just really focused on the arts but no he did not um, um but yeah to just push Ishaya aside, there were other things that happened in this episode that was even way more interesting and noteworthy to talk about. First of all, they started giving Adufe her 
desired spotlight okay they started making adufer's story very interesting adufer had just been like the side piece of rambo for the first three episodes and in this episode she's now been also told to start selling molly as well i felt so bad for adufer see at this point i just want to see better pray that in this life whatever business you are doing may no joe be in your way say in me <laughs> because oh my god guys i wanted to cry for adufe i don't like adufe don't get me wrong eh but the fact that joe stole her drugs oh i was i felt so bad for her and oh my god first of all that bodyguard guy i don't know what it is but i felt like mm, he might low-key have a thing for Adufe because why was he willing to help her you know take her to joe's place the rat cat and rat race <laughs> um, chasing joe up and down just to collect the molly back from him uh but yeah that part was very 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 funny to me and yeah i felt very bad for Adufe because that really 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 pushed her to now suggesting to ishaya that they kidnap frank by the way by this time we already found out that frank likes ralia and he had invited her for the prom and then they brought about a new business of kidnapping when um adufe suggests to ishaya that they kidnap frank and ask for a huge sum of money to so that they can pay off rambo for losing his drugs and for me i just felt like that was a very bad idea and ishaya messed up i felt like that was the height of betrayal he had betrayed michael it just showed how selfish and self-centered ishaya really is he really didn't think about anybody he if he never th thinks about anybody he's always self-preserving because the argument adufe gave for why they should do it and oh if you don't do it it will affect it to affect your family i was like no it will not it this thing is a singular problem it is an adufe problem yes I'm not going to dispute the fact that you helped me save my sister, but don't now drag me down the rabbit hole with you. Like, to, I was just like, this girl is just like, I don't know who sent her. She's just an egg bunny person. Like, she's just, she's just problematic. I was just like, oh, oh, I do fair. I bind you in my life. Joe. I bind you my life because people like that they're just problematic um but of course minus that one of my best scenes was actually in this episode four and that was the um when reggie was asking zina to go to prom with him guys please i i want to believe i was not the only person that felt like that was so romantic i think that's where my obsession <laughs> for um reggie just went over the roof i really really liked it I actually reminded that part like four times i just found it so so cute the fact that everybody was like walking up to her giving her her flowers i was just like oh and then he came and he knelt that i was like bro you've done this before you've done this before you cannot tell me nothing you have definitely done this before but i found that scene to be so so romantic um it was very very nice so i feel like those are like the highlights of episode four i'm not even going to lie to you by episode four i was getting tired i was just like okay so what next now like okay you sold drugs now you're planning on kidnapping um what else and before i could even say what else they gave me what i was looking for with the downfall of atlas okay so in this series so far they have been letting us know that atlas is this rich kid but his father has died he, he wasn't actually the biological son of his dad so he didn't have the opportunity to get any of the inheritance his mom is away frolicking somewhere we don't know and he needs money and he's really hell-bent on getting this art scholarship which is the reason why he's fake dating carmen because he just wants to ensure that he's the one that gets this art scholarship thing okay 
but what was very painful is the fact that like i mentioned in episode two he was cheating on carmen this entire time and his mom now eventually shows up she can't pay the school fees she goes she had the mind to go and threaten the owner of the school saying oh what about the person that your daughter hit not knowing that it's actually her son that caused the accident i was like this woman this is not the right time to be blackmailing these people like i'm just praying to god that today is not the day that carmen is going to expose your son and before i could even drink water and drop cup bagam regardless don't scatter everything because he saw ishaya talking to carmen and to be honest to be very 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 fair even though Atlas had cheated on Carmen, Carmen was low-key doing the same thing because she was kissing Ishaya or about to kiss Ishaya when um, Atlas walked in. And I was like, sis, I understand that what Atlas did to you is bad and like he cheated on you with your best friend, but you were about to cheat on him. Okay, let's get that straight. But again, cheat, a cheater is a cheater. What he did is unforgivable, despicable, terrible because he caused her the accident. She's been in a bad shape ever since. And then you cheated on her with her best friend. Ah, oh, guy, you deserve to have colored terrible hair all the rest of your life <laughs> and more terrible things to happen to you but yeah that was just crazy because the mother had just like threatened Carmen's parents um but I definitely felt for Carmen when she was crying now her and Atlas were announced you know prom king and queen she walks up to the stage I felt like the students were very insensitive to her she was standing there crying I don't know if they thought it was tears of joy because why else are you guys all smiling at her like and holding your phones and nobody really because i feel like there's a difference between tears of joy and actually tears of pain like tears of joy you're still going to be smiling and just be like oh, i can't believe this do you get as opposed to crying and really looking sad and remorseful um yeah it was really painful to you know for her to just stand there and basically blast everything that had happened to her lately in front of everyone but i'm happy that she did that to atlas because guy needed to be put down like and that's on that period and of course in the final episodes a lot went down in my opinion i feel episode five was a little bit rushed as with most nigerian series it's usually like that they always drag the story and then the final episode they just try to throw everything and the kitchen sink in so in the final episode ishaya has no choice but to come clean because he's come to the end of the road they've kidnapped frank things are going crazy at the fair is being impossible once more i don't even know i don't even think at the fair wants more money at this point before i even move forward rambo is wicked how can you say somebody is your partner and you give the person 0.1 percent not one percent mind you 0.1 percent i just I, that killed me in fam that was just too bad i was like rambo rambo he said they fear god they fear god how can you do that um so back to what i was saying right so in this episode Ishaya has no choice but to come clean and i found that to be very bold because in my head when i was thinking about it i was like okay so how is this thing going to end how is this thing going to end i don't see how it's going to end right how does he come out of this web that he's you know involved himself in and really got gotten tangled in and confessing was a good thing but at the end of the day it didn't work to his favor because when they eventually go and read rush they didn't pick the right people and that only just aggravated rambo more i personally feel like government even though government sold drug government was bad and all of that to be fair he wronged government first he stole government's money 
he should have given government a heads up that's just my own because government now ended up in jail because of that and i just felt like that was so unfair so when he went to jail and was like oh government help me blah 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 i've always looked up to you like a teacher i was like Ishaya, get just get out not get out to get out of here get out of here you are not well you are not well you're just a tick 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 he's he just doesn't know when he's gone too far um, another thing I have to comment is Frank. I felt like Frank was very, very kind. I don't know how many people find out that their friend kidnapped them for ransom and still be nice enough to offer their homes to protect his entire family from the looming threat of, you know, drug lords and all of that. I just felt like that was very, very nice of Frank and his mom. Um, that was, again, Frank obviously didn't necessarily do it just because he's friends with Ishaya. He did it because he also cares about Ralia, who is his crush in this series. Now, this is the only part that I felt was a little bit of a letdown for me, and that was when Rambo um, invaded the school. I felt like the people that they used as Rambo's goons didn't look like goons. And why are goons? holding tasers like it just it just didn't seem realistic to me rambo seems like he's from the ghetto he's from the slums i expected his men to be you know giving me king of boys vibe you know holding gun and stuff even if they're going to a school not taser like they're not supposed to fear anybody again i felt like rambo was just doing the most why did he insist on still kidnapping Carmen. I feel like his beef is with Ishaya. He should have just found a way to pick up Ishaya and spare us all that drama. Um, it didn't make sense that the kids could fight the goons. Um, the is it Taekwondo or Kung Fu moves by Reggie. I was not impressed. Personally, that whole scene just I just said like oh oh this is where they lose 0 0.5. This was about to be a perfect 10 over 10 series and then they did this and messed everything all up. But yeah, I felt like it wasn't perfect. Um, even when Adufe, you know, was trying to run away, Rambo came home, found her. Yes, they hit Rambo on the head and he fell to the ground. The fact that she now decided, oh, I'm now going to be the kingpin of this establishment i just felt like oh this girl this girl why are you like this why are you like this i she particularly i feel enjoyed being in that dirty world and i'm the way the series ended of course i feel there's going to be a, a season two and i think in season two when rambo gets out of that cage oh and the fair is going to she will smell her ass she would she would regret why she didn't just kill rambo because again i don't get it why is it that bad guys when you eventually catch your victim why don't you just do the needful end your 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 problem why do you need to keep them there till they can escape and deal with you why why i don't get it so, um, um yeah so i feel like the way they ended it of course they left us wanting more or expecting that there's going to be a season two i'm guessing they're going to do that but to me oh, the story has ended i don't know what else they want to add i feel like they should have just added one more episode and just rounded it or made it a limited netflix series we don't want you know they shouldn't push it any further personally that's my opinion let me know if you think otherwise in the comment section below guys do not forget make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you in my next one bye